Stitchers, Calico here, aka Christine. I don't know why I don't ever use my real name. I think I started off that way just on YouTube, just, you know, kind of wanted to remain anonymous, but, um, you know, with being on YouTube and then um, Facebook, uh, you know, it's inevitable people know your real name. So anyway, you can call me Christine. You can call me Calico. I go by either thing uh, or Chris or any variation of that name. That's the name. That's the thing about my name, Christine. I think I prefer to be called Christine, but most of my family and friends call me Chris or Chrissy or Christy or Christina or anything. I, I'm really not picky. If you're even close to my name, I'll answer to it. Um, anyway, welcome to my new subscribers. And if you by any chance have found your way uh, to my channel via Jessie Marie Does Stuff, welcome. Hi, Jessie. I am still completely giddy over the shout out that she gave me on her video. Um, she was just way too kind. Um, yeah, I'm blushing. I was blushing when I watched it too. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm really not good being the center of attention, so I was really blushing. Anyway, um, what did I want to say about that? Ah, see, I'm just getting all embarrassed just thinking about it now. Um, Anyway, it just was really special. It meant a lot to me because Jessie Marie does stuff. If you have not seen her channel, which I find that hard to believe because she has tons of subscribers and she is, in my mind, one of the early, in, in well, I think in everybody's, she was one of the early pioneers of floss tube. I originally got onto floss tube because of Stitching May. Hi, Megan. And um, because I was just, the only forum I was involved in, and I made mention of it before, but it was the crossstitchforum.com. And I was, you know, really involved in that. And Stitching May said, hey, come on over. People are making video, or, you know, make some videos, and we need to get this community going. And I, I started watching Stitching May, and then she made reference to Jessie Marie Does Stuff in one of her early videos, and Jellicles Forever. So those are the first three that I ever watched. And then there are obviously some more. And I'm, I'm not going to try to name them all because inevitably I'll forget somebody and somebody's feelings will get hurt. So if you were one of the early ones, you can bet I watched you. Um, so anyway, I have just admired um, Jessie Marie and her all of her amazing projects. I mean, I remember early on watching her show Beads and all this hand-dyed fabric. And she talked about stuff that it was like, wow, you know, way over my head. Even though I was involved in a forum and I saw a lot of that, I don't know, just seeing all of her stash early on it was um, a big inspiration so yes I was really really honored to have been one of her shout outs and I was gonna shout out may do a shout out of my own but I I need to talk to her about that that's kind of a, a little featurette she's doing on her blog and I don't want to you know s steal her thunder so I'm gonna you know before I shout out to anybody and anyway, finding who I want to shout out to would be difficult. There are so many floss tubers I love. I wouldn't even know how to choose one to give a shout out to. So um, I'm going to hold off on that for now. Um, okay, on to the next order of business. Um, I have a finish. So I want to show that first. Um, it is, this was given to me by a gal on the forum I had mentioned. Hi, Debbie. And uh, she lives here in Colorado, and she had gifted me with this, and she also had one in her stash, and we were going to stitch them together this year. So this is the one thing that I knew for sure I had to do this year is because we said, yeah, let's stitch these together. And we pretty much just said, we just need to start it this year and finish it by December. Well, she already had hers done, I think, back in February. So um, this was one thing I definitely wanted to do. I've always been a little bit gun shy about it though because it was a handwritten chart and I know she kind of had a little bit of troubles kind of deciphering some of the the charting code on it and it had some specialty stitches because it's a band sampler and I've never done a band sampler so I delved into that and it oh my gosh I am completely addicted to band samplers now this was so fun even though it had some charting issues and you know a little unevenness about it and I had to make some alterations but oh my gosh and it was small but I loved it I loved it. like oh what is the next band gonna have so I can totally see the whole twisted band sampler you know um, intrigue yeah I may have to consider doing that one now anyway without further ado here is my Colorado 
band sampler. It says, Colorado, where the columbines grow. And then it's got a hummingbird and a columbine. So this, oh, don't ask me to name the stitches, but this was a decorative stitch here. I want to say a road stitch. I don't remember them all. Um, and this is just cross stitch here, but uh, now I had to make a little bit of alterations in this. The hummingbird called for a crinic, um in like peacock color, which I didn't have, so I just used one of the, the hand dyed flosses that came with this, the chart. It came with chart and hand dyed floss. Anyway, I just sort of improvised on that. And when all was said and done, I added this black line kind of outline on his head because um, just from farther it just almost looked like a hummingbird with a sharp point on his head and you couldn't really decipher that that was his back wing so I kind of just added a little highlighting there to his head but um, oh my gosh the absolute cutest thing about this entire project is are the little feet on that hummingbird can you just see those oh my god those are so adorable I'm just I am just smitten by hummingbird feet. I don't know why. They're just so little and tiny and not really useful because a hummingbird can't walk with his feet. So um, he can perch with them, but they're so tiny. And it's just so cute because when they're feeding on the feeder, if you ever, if you have hummingbirds and have ever had the joy of watching one, their little feet just hang there. They're just so cute. And you know, just look at those little cute little hummingbird feet. <laughs> Anyway, um, they kind of remind me of like how useless the hands are in a T-Rex, you know? They're kind of just, <laughs> they sort of just hang there, kind of disproportionate to the body. Um, anyway, enough of that. I just thought those were just cute little feet. Uh, so we got some satin stitch in there, um, more decorative stitches. We've got, of course, our, our Rocky Mountains. And then we get, oh, we have beautiful fall colors in the fall. So we get the aspen trees and, of course, lots of snow and skiing here. So, whoop, lost you. So I think this was just the funnest little thing. Thank you again, Debbie, for that. It's just, I, it was just absolutely fun to stitch. But do not, and I don't know ever who would, but if anybody ever took a magnifying glass to this thing, it is riddled with mistakes. You cannot tell, but they're there. Trust me. I made so many mistakes in this thing. I don't know why. I just, yeah, I kept getting off on my count, not just like by a stitch, but by one thread. You know, I was doing over two. I know what the problem is, is that I probably really should use a magnifier at all times when stitching on this count. What is this? Okay, this is 32 count. I mean, you know, I, I probably should just except the fact that I need a magnifier when I'm stitching. And so I don't, I end up trying to just see, and then I'm like, oh, that's off. And oh, these mountains are so off. I, I just, after unstitching them a few times and trying to fix them up, I'm, I'm telling you, if you look at this, you will find some stitches that are three over three and you will find some that are one over one, all mixed in here. It's just a tragedy, but <laughs> in the long run, if you stay there, you can't see anything. So anyway, I just think that's, oh, and I should probably say that this is by a uh, local, I think they're local. There's a, a shop up in a mountain town, Estes Park. If you live in Colorado, you, or ever visit Estes Park, and it's called the Stitching Den, and I think that's where she bought the pattern, and it's called, it's by Fireside Originals. So, Colorado Band Sampler. And that's that. Okay, what else have I done since my last video? I've gotten some progress on my bear here. I don't know where I was last time I showed you, but I think I had just started working on the bear. So I got more of this done. Actually, I may not have backstitched. Yeah, I think I did backstitch this. So I've just uh, been working mostly on the teddy bear and this little curtain over here, and I'm really trying to backstitch as I go. So here's a close-up of that. You want to see? I did his eyes because his eyes just need to be done. So he can so he can see what I'm, so he can see what's being stitched on this project. So. And that's that. And I put that aside because um, if you saw the video I did before I reviewed the Halloween, when I had my FFOs, I sort of took a little break from this and I went on into um, doing those FFOs and working on some of those smaller projects. Um, and then, so I guess I'll just talk about 
before I have a small haul, but I want to talk about what I started. I have a new start because as soon as I finish the Colorado band sampler, oh, darn, um, I didn't bring it over here. Let me go grab that really quick. Okay, I'm going to insert a picture because I don't have the magazine with me, but um, in the Halloween magazine that I just did a flip through of, there was one in there that sort of resembled a vintage postcard, and I started that one last night. So this right here is the nose on a white jack-o'-lantern that's going to have some cats on it, and um, I just did that much last night. I couldn't, I just couldn't help myself. I had to get started on that, and um, it's a real easy stitch. It's got a lot of big blocks of color, but I was surprised once again. I was thinking in my head it was kind of small. I thought it was going to be like, you know, three by five, and then when I did the stitch calculator that Thanks, LD, for sending me a link to the one-on-one, -on -one, two, three stitch. I had no idea they had a stitch cal calculator on there. So I calculated the stitch and cut the fabric in. I thought, wow, that's way bigger. I probably wouldn't have done this project if I would have known it was going to be this big. I thought it made a cute little five by seven. I probably should have stitched it one over one. But yeah, it's going to be big because it's going to, I think I left myself about an inch or two fabric. So big. But it's going to be fun to stitch. It's it's one of those no-brainers that just doesn't take a lot of thought. Although it does have some fractional stitches in it that I didn't realize until I started doing, but nothing too major. Um, so that, and I also kitted up another one from that magazine that I loved. If you've watched that, this one right here. Um, this is a copy from the magazine that I own. So this is the one I'm going to also be stitching, and I'm going to probably start that today. And I got this fabric here, which is just a, hmm, I don't know, natural linen, or I think this one here is a 32 count lamb's wool, and then this one is a, just a darker, I think, natural linen, or that maybe is natural and this is lamb's wool. I don't know. I am terrible at fabrics, guys. I'm just kind of venturing into that, but I had all of these stashed, these uh, hand-dyed flosses that it called for. Um, Actually, I think I made a few close substitutions, but I had these in my stash just from previous projects that I did. So um, in the next clip later in this video, you'll probably see either a start, maybe hopefully a finish on that one. So, because like I said, it's January. Did I say that? Or was that in the take that I, okay, I tried to take, I had to do like five takes in this before I started. So I don't know if I told you that I'm doing this in several clips. So this right now, it's July 28th, but by the time this is released, it's gonna probably be middle of August. So anyway, hopefully I'll have that something done or started on that. And uh, this is the other one that I finally kitted up because it was one this year that I really wanted to get done. It doesn't look too difficult, but I just love it. It was by the um, Scattered Seed Samplers. I always find when I watch my videos that I don't, I keep forgetting to leave out, I keep, forgetting to give details about things like what kind of fabric I used and what count or what color. And I know that that stuff's important. I like to hear that when I watch videos because, you know, we are enablers, right? And we like to know those details so that we can go out and buy that stuff. So this one is by the Scattered Seed Sampler and it's called uh, Mary Mustard Seed. So it says, let me show it to you first. So it says, and I, I showed this in a previous video, scattered seed I sow for thee, oh gather birds and sing for me, I think is what it says. So, yes, that is me, so I have to do that. I will do that this year. Hopefully by the time this video is done, I will have started it because I found this little piece, which it barely fits on. I'm going to only have about maybe an inch on all sides. This is 32, uh, 30 count espresso linen, and I don't know who that's by. I get all my fabric from, most of it from 123 Stitch, so uh, they don't ever put on there who it's by, and I should try to make a note of that, but uh, I've decided to do just the DMC colors of that instead of the hand dyed, because I think it'll just be fine. Um, so. All right, so we got my finish, we got my whips, my plans, and then I have a small haul. I bought some fabric. This is pretty small, so I bought, uh, for the Hummingbird Sal, the Blackboard Hummingbird Sal from World of Cross Stitch that's starting in September. Um, it originally called for antique white cashel linen, so I bought a piece of that, but I, 
you know, it just, I'm just not sure I'm going to use it. It's very see-through. It's very, I don't know, it's very fine. And I just don't know if I really like, I don't know if I like it for that project. So I thought, well, we'll see what everybody else is doing. Some people are using some colored um, fabric and others are using this. And I just wasn't sure, but I thought I'm going to order... Uh, when I was working on this, this is Belfast linen, I believe, mellow Belfast linen, and I really liked it. I really liked it, so I thought, well, I'm going to get a Belfast linen and see if I like that for my hummingbird. And then I, of course, saw the word opalescent and said, hmm, should I? Should I? It is a hummingbird, and the hummingbird is not stitched with metallics or anything, so I thought, you know, you do a hummingbird project, you have to have sparkles. So I went ahead and got this. This is 32 count white opal, and I know that it's Belfast linen. So you see the sparkle in that, and it just isn't quite as sheer. So I think I've pretty much made up my mind that I'm going to stitch my black work hummingbird on that. So, okay, and just because I'm really trying to venture out with my hand dyed fabrics, I did buy one called Stormy Night. Now, I don't like a lot of modeling in my fabric. I, They're gorgeous, but for my taste, I just prefer to stitch on something a little bit more subtle. So I was trying to find some subtly, subtly, sub, subtly modeled fabrics. And so this one is, I thought might be good for some Halloween projects. It's bluer than I thought. I thought it's going to be more gray, but it's bluer. So yeah, it's nice. Um, I'm going to definitely use that for something. And then I got one called Earthen Belfast, which this one's starting to get a little bit too modeled for my taste. But, you know, as long as I stitch something that can still show up well on it, it's gorgeous. I love it. So I'll use it for something. And these are just some small sample pieces just to kind of test the waters with those. I mean, they're great for ornaments. And then, um, I got Winter Moon Belfast Linen in 32 count. This one's not modeled at all. It's just, mm, it doesn't really look, it's, it's really just kind of an off-white, kind of beige color. Now, the reason I was getting those is because I got a new chart that I've had in my wish list for a while um, by the Crosswing Collection. And I just... I think when I got my magazine, you know how you just you throw chart you throw charts and patterns to try to justify the shipping and stuff. So I got this one. This is Morning Doves by the Crossed Wing Collection. Um, morning Doves, as my husband calls them, are like one of the more homely looking birds out there. They're actually I don't know. They're kind of like a pigeon, you know. I don't know. They just they're very bland, and you know my husband says they have that such that. Sad, sad song because they're mourning how homely they are. Um, if you don't know what a mourning dove sounds like, I will insert a sound for them right here. Okay, so as you can see, they're beautiful song, but it is kind of sad. Anyway, the reason I, I was drawn to this chart is because I have a couple of morning doves that hang out in my yard pretty much all year round, and they really like my yard. They just kind of lay in the grass and bask in the sun and hang out my bird feeder and, I mean, the bird bath, and they're really cute, and so um, I just had to get this chart to stitch them. Even though I took a picture almost that looks almost exactly like this, I have a picture, and I could have just charted that up and stitched it, but I don't know. This was by the Crosswing Collection, and I thought it was already beautifully charted with all of those fall leaves. It was those leaves that, that, that called to me, too. So I was thinking about doing that on this. this I mean, that kind of looks like it, huh? But I don't know. I don't know. I might, I might do it on this. I don't know. I haven't decided. But anyway, that's why I was getting those fabrics. So morning doves. I don't know when I'll start that because I have so many things I want to stitch coming up, which leads me to my next final purchase. Um, if you 
did watch Jesse Marie, you'll notice I was like, uh, really interesting that this book right here, she showed that she got, and she was talking about how her style changes, has changed, and she never in a million years would have ever thought first that she would ever stitch a bird, or second that she would ever stitch something so country as this. And it's interesting because my tastes have completely changed too. When I first got on to like the forum and then eventually floss tube, I in no way, shape or form had an interest in ever stitching a fairy or any Joan Elliott, Nora Corbett, or anything with a dragon, medieval, anything, anything like that. I was just like, I just, it, that was so far from my taste, I just couldn't ever see it. And I absolutely love dragons now. I will probably stitch one. I love the beautiful dragons that everybody's stitching and the beautiful mirabilias. And it's like, now I get it. I, you know, I never kind of understood, well, what is everybody? I know I'm getting off on a tangent from this, but I'll get back to it. Um, you know, I just was thinking, you know, I, I don't understand why everybody was always stitching these, the, you know, the women and stuff like that. But I get it now because now all it takes is is just doing one something that's got like the gorgeous gown and the dresses and it's like playing it's like when you're a little girl when you're well if you were okay obviously not if you're a guy but if you were a girl and you played with dolls and I loved paper dolls when I was a kid and just dressing dolls and stuff like that and I never really made the connection that that's that's the draw to those it's kind of like you're playing with paper dolls or you're you know you're just stitching and you're decorating these women not only are you stitching the woman them herself but you get to decorate these gorgeous costumes with all these beads and so yeah I know I'm just I'm so close to getting a mirabilia but like Teresa Stitcher I'm scared of them I don't know if I'm, I'm gonna start small so I'm really 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 thinking about the fall fairy by the one that I might be wrong I don't know that's is that Nora Nora Corbett yes I think it's Nora Corbett's fall fairy I mean I think that will be the first one that I do that's of that type of stitching and I love earth goddess too which I think is Joan Elliott and I'll work my way up to a Mirabilia so but anyway yeah my tastes have changed too that long long way to say a short step back to this so I just stumbled across this I shouldn't say I stumbled across it let me let me talk about the fact that I owned this book once way back when I first did my very first cross stitching uh, first I first did a cross stitch and I want to say that that was probably roughly about 1998 1997 something like that I don't know when this book was made but when I went in to do a cross stitch this is the book that I grabbed so I it's, it's funny now because now I love dimensions kits and I just I'm all about kits but the very first time I cross stitched I grabbed this book and did a polyphon I didn't even know who she was or how hard it was so way back this was the first oh yeah I was just I bought this book I'm like I'm gonna stitch this year I'm gonna stitch all 12 of these because it's a quilt for all seasons so the very first cross stitch I ever did in my life was this one here and it's January and I um, finished this and I had it framed I framed it myself and you can see I didn't do a really good job it's got actually some stains up here it's really old and oh do I dare show the back look at that guys look at those look at those threads hanging there I mean you know look at that you can hang that I had no idea back then that you weren't supposed to do anything like that so ooh, that's bad so anyway let's let's concentrate on the front um, anyway, I had this thing framed and hanging in my kitchen for years and years and years and years. And this not only was the start of my cross stitching career, but it was also the end of it for a long time because after I stitched this, um, I didn't stitch again for about 10 years or so, 10 or more, because it was, it took me so long to do this and it just I thought gosh cross stitching I really retard and I didn't have anything very big to show for afterwards because at the time I was a quilter I actually had a quilting business at one point I had a, a gamel long arm quilting machine and quilting was my obsession so I you know everything was all about quilting and I had a business for about five years and I may have mentioned this in a previous video but 
I had that um, quilting machine where I quilted the quilt tops. That's where you layer together the other people's quilt tops and you quilt them. And anyway, I did that for five years in my basement. And I had that big machine, 14 foot table and everything. And um, I sold my machine when I got pregnant with my first son. And he's going to be 13 next year. So we're talking a lot of years ago. But having a business completely squashed that hobby for me. And I have not made a quilt since. But I love quilts. I adore them. So I just got to thinking just not too long ago, a couple weeks ago, um, when I saw this in my stash, I'm like, you know, I need to repurchase that book. Oh, because I donated all my cross stitching stuff. I said, I'll never do that again. That was just way too time consuming. So I used to have this book, I donated it, and now I wanted it back again because I thought, gosh, I would like to finish that series because, you know, it's, it's not as daunting as it was when I was a beginner. But come to find out, when I got this book, I opened it up, I realized that, here's the picture, I realized that I didn't really do any of the back stitching that's called for in this pattern. You can, can you see how the quilt has all the lines back stitched on it and all that back stitching? And here's mine, no back stitching. And I I didn't even know that I didn't do that back stitching. So I learned something. I learned that I didn't back stitch. And probably looking at this chart, it's really hard to decipher the back stitching. So I probably was completely confused by it. But all these years, I didn't even know that I didn't back stitch. But guys, there are fractional stitches in there. Can you see all those fractional stitches? This was a hard project for a very first project. It's funny, I don't even do hard projects like that, you know, now I try to avoid them, but I'm gonna tackle this book, this book. And Jessie Marie showed you the one she wants to stitch, which is kind of funny because that's exactly the one when I got this, I purchased it on eBay because I think this is out of print. And boy, I'll tell you, it seems like everybody's snatching it up now. So if you want it, you better go get it. This one. I love, 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 love that. Now, there is a, um, on Cross Stitch and Discuss, uh, there is a Paul Levon Stitch Along starting in October. If I haven't started it by then, I will start it then. But... I might not be able to hold off till then because that is just gorgeous. I mean, my love of quilts, my love of fall, I love it. My absolute most favorite and the most classic of all quilt patterns is the log cabin quilt pattern. And there is not a log cabin quilt pattern to be seen in this book. And I can't believe it. I mean, they've got the schoolhouse pattern and they've got... Um, the maple leaf pattern and the flying geese and um, which are also known as other names too. But, oh my gosh, you know, it wouldn't have been much to do a log cabin quilt in here. Oh, double wedding ring. I mean, they have all the classics, but no, no log cabin quilt makes me sad. But these are some gorgeous patterns, guys. So you're gonna be seeing some of these in my future. Okay, wow, that is all I have for you right now. Um, just in case I don't do a part two to this, then this may be the end. And because uh, it's, it's long, I think it's, oh, okay, see this is 30 minutes. I may just upload this and I may tack it on and do it with my August update. I haven't decided. Hi guys, I'm back for part two and it's not the middle of August. Like I said, I was gonna be back for um, it is actually the last day of July, so it's July 31st, 2015, and I just decided to make this my July update and kind of end it here. So, uh, the last time I talked to you was a few days ago, and I have not done any more progress on the vintage postcard Halloween pattern that I was working on, but I did start this one that I showed, also from the Halloween 2015 Halloween Just Crossed it issue, and this is my progress on it so far. Those are Smyrna stitches. 
little tiny ones right there, which I love. I love they just kind of give a um, really a dimensional effect to it there. So I did use the hand dyed uh, kind of a combination of the Weeks Dye Works and Gentle Art Sampler threads that I had in my stash, um, except for I didn't have this called for the color flax, and I don't I can't remember if that was a Weeks Dye Works or Crescent Colors. I mean, classic color works or gentle art. Anyway, I didn't have that one. So this kind of should have more of a modeled look to it, um, which I loved. But I just decided to go with the Ecru um, DMC for that. So I just have a little bit more to do on that, the side. Yeah, you can see how I really like the way that color looks in the pattern. But just have the bird and that side border to do and a little bit of the pumpkin. So I'm going to hopefully finish this up. I'd like to finish this up today if I have time to stitch. Um, if not, I'll for sure finish it up this weekend. Because um, the last, the next thing that I want to talk about really quick before I say goodbye for the month is that I decided to join the Crazy 7 Sal on Cross Stitch and Discuss. Um, I'm not usually one for... for um, I shouldn't say starting sales. I'm not one of those that if you give me a certain day to start something, I don't usually like to, I, I just like to start things when I want to start things. And I thought, gosh, I've really been feeling like starting some new projects lately. I don't know if it's just kind of that end of summer, getting ready to get real busy with school and fall and stuff like that. So I don't know. I just said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm just going to join. I'm going to start seven. So you basically start a new start each day for the first seven days of August. And there's also uh, August 2nd, which is, what is, okay, I'm completely confused. Today's Friday, so the first is Saturday. So Sunday um, is also the uh, Biscorn U Sal um, on Cross Stitch and Discuss. And I decided that I'll just join that too, because A, I've never made a Biscorn U, which I have been wanting to make one for a really long time. So I thought, well, I'm just gonna, um, join that sal too since and make that one of my new starts on Sunday. So without further ado, let's get started at what I'm going to be stitching for the next seven days starting tomorrow. Um, this is the one that I showed early on in my video that I was gonna that I wanted to start anyway and I already picked the, the threads and everything for it. So this one's ready to go. So I'll probably start this one on Monday. I don't need to take it out. You saw it earlier in the video. So this is the one I'm gonna start Sunday. In my mind, I have it that Monday's the first, but oh, Saturday, Saturday, never mind. It's Friday. So this is going to be my Saturday start. I'm completely confused. Okay. Tomorrow is Saturday and tomorrow's the first, right? Yes. Saturday. Um, so the second is when we start our Biscorn U, and I scoured, I, I have lots of patterns for some Biscorn U's in my magazines, and uh, the if anybody has the DVD, the Just Cross Stitch DVD for, I think it's the last 10 years, so it was like 2000, 2000 through 2010. I highly recommend that DVD if you don't have it. It's just got loads of great designs. There's a Biscorn U that I saw in there once, and I need to go through all those, all those two, um, all those, what do you call them, issues in my DVD to find it again. And that will probably be the one that I do, but if I don't find it, this is my backup one. This I got from, this is the Just Cross Stitch. Uh, February 2014 issue. And inside here is this little set that has the monogram needle book, Biscorn U and needle fob. Uh, scissor fob. So that Biscorn U right there is the one I'd like to make. It's simple for my first one. It doesn't look difficult at all. It doesn't even have any beads on it, which I, I may throw some beads on there, but it does call for Gloriana silks. I have never in my life stitched with silks before. So I, I doubt I can get any unless I can go drive 45 minutes away to my local needlework store. I know she has some silks and I may do that this afternoon. If I drive there and grab myself some silks, then I'll use, so then I'll actually be using silks for the first time. Do I, do I dare venture into that territory, guys? I don't know. Ah, then I'll have to stitch everything on sil with silks. So anyway, but 
I would like to try silks. And um, I'm not a big fan of purple. I do like this purple that's really dark. Um, it's, I think the color is thistle something. Thistle purple, which I do love that, but I don't know if I'll use purple for that. I mean, I'll, I'll see. I'll touch them all when I get to the store. See which one strikes my fancy. So that's going to be my Sunday start. Uh, this one you've seen in the past, I'm sure. I know for sure Mal Mandy O'Callaghan has stitched it, and I, I know that there are others that have, that other people that have stitched this too, but um, I didn't want to stitch. So this is going to be my August 3rd start, Quaker Moon. Owl. Okay, so we've got our Saturday, Sunday, Monday start. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I'm going to start these kits that I bought on my vacation to South Dakota last summer. And you've seen me feature those in another video. I'm going to do the Crazy Horse Memorial. And these are all by the Posey collection that I got at the gift shop at each one of these monuments. So they're pretty special because I actually got them at those places. And it would be great if I actually stitched them. Well, it'll be pretty much a year this week that we were on that trip. So if I can stitch those this week, that would be great. So then we also went to Devil's Tower, Wyoming. So I got that also by the Posey collection. And I've decided I'm gonna collect these when we go to National Parks. I'm hoping in August that we go to Yellowstone. Um, our whole trip is kind of sort of on hold right now because my husband's extremely busy at work and he's got to finish up this project before he can take any time. And then when he does, I don't know that he's going to feel like going on a take it. We have a trailer and we take it on a road trip and um, he was supposed to take nine days off in July and then nine days off in August and he hasn't been able to take any time off yet because of this crazy work, his crazy work schedule. So uh, I don't know. Um, don't know if we're going to go on a road trip. We're remodeling our basement. We may stay and do that, but it all depends on how he feels. He has multiple sclerosis, so anybody out there that has that or knows somebody with it or has any kind of chronic autoimmune disease, and I know there are a few of you out there, you know what it's like. Sometimes it's just too much to go on a vacation, especially when you are taking a trailer because it's a lot of work. So I think he may just need some relaxing downtime. So we'll see where that goes. But I may not be able to film in August, and I thought I better just get this video done now. Okay, back to it, because I sent my boys out of the house, and I said, be back in 10 minutes, I'll be done filming. Because I don't like to film when somebody's listening to me. I don't know if you guys are like that. It just seems weird. Anyway, <laughs> this one, uh, obviously, you can't go to South Dakota without seeing Mount Rushmore, and yes, I've gone, I'm in my late 40s, and this was the first time I've ever seen Mount Rushmore. So, gotta stitch that. These look like pretty straightforward, and they're kits, so I know some of you cringe at that, but me, I love kits. I'm like, you know, give me everything I need. I'm good to go. All I need is a needle, and I'm ready to stitch. Add some scissors. And last but not least, so that's what we've got. We've got our Saturday, Sunday, Monday, to Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And the last one is another book that I bought earlier in my video. Okay, I'm all about quilts now. Now, that's my thing. That's my thing now. I gotta stitch quilts, everything quilts. I bought this a while ago, a couple years ago, and I didn't even realize at the time it's Ursula Michael Designs. I don't think I even really knew who she was at the time when I bought this, but I have since learned who she is and know that I love her designs. So, bonus there, Ursula Michael. This, these are five seasons of quilts, and no, I'm not gonna stitch all five, I'm going to pick one. So here is kind of a, kind of a preview of what these look like. Different ones, got the different months there. Um, it just dawned on me, why is there five seasons? They only have four seasons, oh wait, oh no. Winter, spring, summer, fall. Well, I guess maybe they consider Christmas a season right there because there's winter and there's Christmas. Aren't those great, guys? And if you're wondering which one I'm going to pick, I bet you can guess already. 
Yep, I'm going to do the autumn one because it has a log cabin quilt right there in the middle. Yay! Look at the detail on those. Isn't that great? So it calls for a fabric piece that's like 27 inches by 10 inches. Um, I'm going to have to, that's why I saved this for the last, because I, I think I'm going to have to order a piece of fabric that's that big. All the pieces I have in my stash seem to be about 18 inches is the biggest. So I could squeeze it in on that because actually the, I have some 18 count that's 32, 32 count, 18 inch fabric that's 32 count. So technically, if I left myself only an inch on each side, this would fit. So I may do that, but. I don't know. They're stitching it on a just a pretty plain bone colored fabric. So and I may just do these on Ada. I really like 18 count Ada. I don't like 14 count Ada, but I do like 18 count Ada. Um, maybe even just an ivory color because I can get that actually locally. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with that, but that's the one I'm gonna stitch. And that's gonna be it, my crazy seven. And I think that's all I have to talk about. Um, yes, I have, oh, yeah, I guess I will be starting, I was debating whether to start my, uh, August flower of the month as part of my crazy seven, and I decided I'm going to do seven, and then I'm going to actually sometime in August start my August flower of the month for the flower of the month south. So, that's it. It's going to be busy, busy August, especially if I go on a road trip. And with school starting, even though I homeschool, it's still a hectic time of year. Got to get on those different routines and you know, scheduling and stuff like that. Um, so that's all I have for you. I think that's the last thing I had to say. And uh, I'm definitely saying goodbye this time until maybe September. May try to come back in September for an update. And hopefully I'll have gotten maybe some finishes here. Let's cross our fingers. And if not, maybe I'll have new starts. Who knows? You know, I... I sort of leave my schedule pretty open when it comes to cross stitching. I mean, after all, it's my hobby. It's stress free. If I feel like starting, I'll start. If I feel like finishing, I'll finish. If I feel like doing something completely different, then I'll do it. But I'm starting to ramble, so I'm going to say goodbye. I hope everybody has a great stitchy day, a great weekend. It's Friday. It's the end of the month. I can't believe it's August already. And I hope you get some stitching time in. And I will see you sometime in the fall. All right. Bye, guys.